Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the study this morning. Continuing to study Judges, um, just finishing off uh, the fall of Abimelech. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have once again to study your word, uh, to look at the things uh, that address our present time by looking at the past. We know, Lord, we need your presence every moment, and we need your help in presenting and understanding these truths. And so we just invite your Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds. Give us wisdom and understanding, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, yesterday we were finishing off uh, Abimelech, not not literally, but uh, we we're at least uh, looking at his demise, so the downfall of Abimelech. And um, we started to put on the line uh, these events in the 777 days. And the way that I was looking at it is that I was seeing that um, the the line is addressing the 273. Now, now somebody asked me the question on, on WhatsApp. They sent me a question asking who first presented the 273. So, um, so obviously I present this on November 9th. And this is in connection with the mind calendar, right? So this is this deals with the symbol of the Levites in connection with the the July 18, 2020 date and uh, October 11th, which is derived at by a calculation based upon the 391 years. And then I also get um, April 26, 2020. Uh, or no, pardon me, that's going to be May, is that date I haven't put in here. Um, so I'll just do this again. So when I, when I search there, um, I guess what I could search, what's the simple search here? Well, I guess if I put October, 11, that will be an easy search. So that doesn't show up too much. Uh, yeah, so the other date is April 9th, which is March 27th, 2021 on the Julian calendar. So these two dates, um, the center date of those two dates is July 10th, 2020. And so when we, and I haven't put that date on there yet. So when we mark these dates, what I had done is I had put this April 26th, uh, 2020 date and this July 10th, 2020 date, and there's an October uh, 11th, uh, 2019 date that's not on here. So anyway, that's why I had placed this. Let me think here again. So if I do that again, um, that's going to be 2021, pardon me, April 9th, 2021. So the April 26th, 2020 date, why did I put that on here? So what was I saying about this? <clears throat> That's April 20th. Paper to... Right. So I'm going to send that. I'm going to, it's not a paper. It's just an email to Jeff explaining um, the implications of what I found with the mind calendar regarding the prediction of July 18, 2020. So it's my understanding is, I mean, I obviously came to understand it slightly before that, but that's when it's a formalization of a message. So if we say the message of the Mayan calendar, um, in regard to July 18, 
I mean, there's more to the Mayan calendar than that because there is also uh, presentations I did in 2018 regarding the Mayan calendar. But here it's in connection with 273. And so when I look at this July 18th message, um, there is an understanding that happens on July 18th regarding uh, the failure of the July 18, 2020 prediction. That is, what we are seeing on this line is this line is about a prediction that's made. It starts with December 21st, 2012, which is a failed prediction. And this line uh, illustrates how God was giving us all of this light regarding this failed prediction. And so we've, we need to figure out how to understand this. So the date that I would put here as the formalization, you know, just in my guessing, is going to be this, this date of um, May 9th. That's no, not May 9th. It was, what was the date again? It's, it's going to end up being, I just keep forgetting. What was the date? April 9th. That was it. April 9th, 2021. Now, April 9th, 2021 is March 27th, Julian. So maybe what I'll put here is I'll put March 27th, Julian. There we go. For some reason it's not working. I'm not sure what's going on. I type the, the typing thing function's not working. <clears throat> I have no idea why. I've had trouble with the computer this morning, so. <clears throat> don't see any jammed keys or anything like that. Do you have any idea what's going on around? <laughs> um, sometimes if you press shift and control on, and on both sides, it will, one of the keys gets stuck. Okay. Okay, it somehow fixed it. Not sure what it did. Thanks. I actually pushed the keys on uh, both control keys. They seem to fix it. Okay, thanks. So then we get this March 27th, 2021 date. So this is going to be um, a formalization. Now, we, we already had March 27th, uh, 2021 as a Gregorian date. So what I'm doing is I'm... I'm addressing this Mayan calendar understanding. Now, I'm gonna do it this way here. So when we look at the Mayan calendar, this was the 391 years, and this is how we arrived at these two dates. We had July 10th as uh, the center of these 273 days on either side of July 10th gives us these two different calculations that produce April 9th, which is March 27th, 2021, Julian. And um, we also had, of course, the 273. So there was, trying to remember, I know there's something that I've forgotten about. Ah, uh, okay. So 
Well, that was the other thing about March 27th, Julian, that is significant. So there's the thing I forgot about. And that is the Mayan date. So this date here on the Mayan calendar is 13... Thirteen zero seven seven seven. Now, how can I take these dates where nothing happens? How can I take these and place them on a line? Because we don't have an event for April 26, 2020, other than that I sent Jeff that paper. So I guess that's an event. It's a formalization. But, you know, it's sort of, um, we already have that as a symbol. But July 10th, we don't have an event for that date. Now, July 18th, of course, nothing happened. It's a failed prediction. And then we have this March 27th, 2021 Julian date, which is 130777. Um, what would be the basis of doing this? Because what is this line about? Because who is Abimelech? in the context of our time in this prophecy. Question again, please. Well, the question is, we have Abimelech's downfall, right? And we're asking who Abimelech is in the context of the application of this prophecy. Because we're tying Abimelech to this Mayan calendar date, this 273 uh, study, two of them that were presented on November 9th, 2019. And we're saying that that's what's starting this. And so when we're we're creating these dates. These dates are based upon the Mayan calendar, right? That is upon that prediction made with the Mayan calendar. Now, the July 18 day, date is there because it's a failed prediction. And so a second message arises on July 18th in regard to this movement, in regard to the downfall of Abimelech. So this is what I'm, I'm trying to say, that Abimelech represents a message, and this message is attached to stuff, right, to people and ideas. It's not just a single message. And it has a downfall, right, because this isn't a person or it's, it's related to part of a message in our movement. In this situation, is it possible that the message regarding Abimelech is the message that we are to give to those that have remained within the corporate church? Um, okay. Um, trying to understand how that would relate to something within. So the message that we were supposed to give to the church? <clears throat> well, we've given a message that was supposed to be given to the church that the church had chosen to cover up, and that was July 18th. Okay. Now, the message is given. The church chose not to accept it. The church has gone on its own way. So we have this, we have this message, as you're showing here on Abimelech's, you know, with Abimelech's downfall, mm -hmm. where on July 18th, we've come right to the center point 
And at this point, we have many that are saying, yes, Sister White said this, but we should never have made this public. Okay, so dealing with Nashville. Okay. Um, okay, well, that doesn't, I, I can't fit that into what I'm thinking. Well, I, I recognize that I'm going more figurative than literal. Yeah. Yeah. So the way that I would look at it is that Abimelech's message is is related to the message of time, right? Specifically of events that are predictions that are failed predictions. That is November 9th and July 18th are both failed predictions on our line. But we also have December 25th. Now it's the Mayan calendar that's presented on November 9th, 2019 at the School of the Prophets, right? So, and, and the number there related to it is this 273. And so there is Abimelech's downfall happens uh, really because of his own actions. And we have two towers that are going to be attacked, right? These, these actually led, lead directly to Abimelech's downfall, right? The tower with the men of Shechem in it, and then the tower of, of Tebes, where the millstone uh, comes and hits him on the head, and then a sword is going to, by the young man, his armor bearer is going to put the sword through him, and that's going to be his demise. And maybe I'm, I'm wrongheaded in how I'm looking at this, but, and, and maybe I'm just being a little bit, you know, sort of, um, uh, you know, I start down a path and I, and I have to continue on it, even if it, if it doesn't make sense, but Yeah, so March 27, 2020 is the 130777. You're right. So I got that wrong. So this March 27th, it's just, yeah, because that wouldn't make any sense, would it? So I'm going to get rid of that. So it's just March 27th, Julian. Uh, right. Okay. Thanks for that, Iran. So I'm just correcting something here. But April 26, 2021 is 130888. April 26, 2021. We have March 27th, 2021, Julian. And it's March 27th, 2020. That is 130777. And, um, and then we're going to put December 25th at the end. Now, is December 25th a failed prediction? December 25th, 2021. Why would it be a failed prediction? Um, well, I'm just asking the question because we had three dates in our line, right? We had the November 9th and the July 18th, and both of those are failed predictions. And we predicted the Sunday law on December 25th, 2021. Now, we did have Stephen um, present the 777 years from 457 BC to 321 AD, where we have the Sunday law on March 7th. And so this was something that we should have noticed long before, but we didn't. So the 777 years come at that time. And then Colin does his presentation to try to explain um, the Trump, uh, you know, what, what, how, wh how we could understand the Trump prediction, right? So, so 
I mean, we didn't really predict anything on December 25th, 2021. We did say that it was the Sunday law, but we knew that it was a symbol of the Sunday law, not the actual Sunday law itself. And when Jeff did that, so when we had taken the line and we had ended the line with the Sunday law, with the 20th day of the ninth month on the biblical calendar, we should have seen that we were actually creating a line that was uh, typical. That is, we had, um, so I'm going to have to draw some stuff out here. I got too many ideas going through my head um, <clears throat> on how I understand this. So, So one of the things we've, we've understood in this message for a long time is we have this. Um, first day of the first month, fifth day of the fourth month, first day of the fifth month, and 10th day of the seventh month. This is April 19th, July 21st. August 15th and October 22. So this is Millerite history. This is the template by which we compare all of our lines. Now we also have this as 9-11, midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law, right? And of course we can take our line and when we originally created this line with 11.9. So I'm going to put 11.9 here. We had 11.9 as being midnight, then or and then we had the midnight cry as being uh, July 18th, and then the Sunday law as uh, December 25th, 2021. But really, this would have made much more sense Why do I say that? Why would this have made more sense? Why didn't we do it this way? I had not considered it in that way before. Okay. <clears throat> so one is we had this idea because we didn't understand how to look at the lines, right? So we knew that we had, uh, one is there was, this was going to be raffia, and this was going to be panium, and raffia and panium were midnight and the midnight cry. But we knew that we already had multiple lines. Now, one of the things that we, we did as time moved on, so once 9-11 had passed, had we moved the symbol of midnight to July 18th and the symbol of the midnight cry to the Sunday law, had we done that? Had anybody tried that? I don't think so. Stephen? Stephen's listening. Uh, not to my memory. Okay. 
but we did try to move Paneum over to here, didn't we? Have we tried to make it a period of time? That Raphael was this period, and then Paneum would this be this period? Do you remember Jeff doing that, anyone? Sounds familiar. Okay. So so we did. We we tried to figure out because 9-11 didn't fit uh the idea of Raphia, because this was supposed to be the king of the south defeating the king of the north, and that didn't happen. And like the Millerites, we just as things weren't fulfilled that we thought needed to happen, we we didn't change our scenario we just ignored things right <clears throat> now i believe that this is raffi and paneum because people have asked me this question and i said well yes this is still correct but that's on a different line and and we still haven't sorted out what lines we have in our history completely Right. So at some point, we're going to get these lines all sorted out. And Judges is helping us sort those out. So if we took this line here, because remember, when we're studying uh, Jotham and Abimelech, we're looking at something that relates in Millerite history to Samuel Snow's letters. Now, we have the prediction before midnight. So if we have the prediction before midnight, we know that the prediction before midnight in Samuel Snow's letters is July 18th. So here I have midnight as July 18th. So this is some line. This line exists in our lines because we've already done this with 11.9, right? We say that 9-11 and 11-9 are the same symbol. We just flip them around and we can have another line. And so this line here is, I believe, the line that we were actually dealing with when it came to the July 18 prediction. Now, if this is midnight, how does that, what does that mean regarding um, our message, because we have a failed prediction here, right? This is a failed prediction. Now, we never pre predicted anything for March 27th, 2021. It was always a structural date, but it was symbolic. Now, um, so I asked a question at the beginning. Does anyone know where we got the symbol 273 from initially and who presented it? Because somebody asked me if it was text. Uh, what about the 100 days of prayer, Levites, huh? Okay, well, yeah, but we had it back in 2018. Stephen? Was it Tess? I think it was uh, Tess was doing a study in Acts, 20, in Acts 27. Okay. Yes. So we didn't have the symbol already from Numbers 3? Not that I know of. Which, which seems to me kind of odd because it's much more obvious than Acts 27. Right? Because Acts 27 doesn't even, there's nothing there that addresses the Levites. There's nothing there that we would be able to if, if we were just looking at it with what with the knowledge we have i don't see how we could get 273 out of acts 27 without first having that as a symbol you understand what i'm saying oh 
what she would have done yeah. was subtracted Aristarchus, Paul, and Luke from uh, the 276 that were on board the ship. Right. But the thing is, that wouldn't be logical. Like, you know, if I was, if I didn't have the number 273 to begin with, it wouldn't make sense to, to just subtract the three and get this 273. I mean, in my thinking, right? I, I wouldn't, I mean, I would look at the number 276 and just take that as a symbol, right? The idea of subtracting out, you know, Luke, uh, Paul, and Aristarchus to get 273 and say that's a symbol of the Levites when there is nothing in that chapter that, that tells me anything about the Levites, right, in a direct way. Numbers 3, it tells me a lot about the Levites, right? Now, so I'm wondering if, if the 273 symbol from Numbers 3 f existed first, but we just never paid much attention to it, that somebody presented it first. I haven't been able to find that they did, but from my thinking, it doesn't really make sense that... You're just going to take the story of Acts 27 and then assign that number to the Levites. I mean, the number could be there as a symbol, but to say that it's it's the Levites just out of that, that seems kind of odd. But it could be that that's, that's what happened first. And then we notice numbers three. Now the, Stephen? Yeah, so um, I think obviously Tess had was aware of the Levite issue, the number there on in number three. And so she derived that. She did take that when she was doing her study of Acts. She okay. sort of connected to that. Um, but I think there, there was some evangelical, there was an evangelical person had done studies like years ago, no prior. We found it online that he had, so it was there. Uh, that sort of connection was there elsewhere, you know, just generally in Christianity. Yeah. Now, you know, we can all suffer from false memory syndrome, but I sort of seem to remember that the number 273 existed before uh, the presentation of Acts 27. Um but I can't remember where I heard it. Either it was a Parminder presentation, because we already had the priest Levites and the Nethanim for a while, right? So, or else Acts 27 wouldn't have made any sense to be talking about the Levites. So we had this, this idea. Um, so I feel that, you know, that she was aware of it, but I don't know if it was from evangelical sources, or if somebody had brought it up at some point. Um, so that's what I don't know, if, if somebody has an answer to that. But anyway, that was, that was the question regarding the 273. Because when, so the number of things that happened, one is I confirmed on October 13th, 2018, the November 9th date based upon the 391.5, and then on November 9th, I present the 273, this number of the Levites. Now, um, to me, the 273, you know, some of the significance of it is that we had this March 27th date. And when I had counted uh, the period of time between October 13th and September 7th, when Jeff wakes up and 63 days before November 9th. And of course, September 7th, nine times seven is 63. But then when I counted that period, the number of weeks, and I found the center, the center was March 27th, 2019. And we already had this 273, the March 27th, 2021. And then I knew that the center of that would be March 20. 7th, 2020. And um, so there's, 
this March 27, 2020 date that became significant. And that one is also, that's the one that's the mine date 130777. <clears throat> so what I'm saying anyway here that this, this idea of this line, I still think is a valid way of looking at this line. That this midnight is a midnight that relates to the March 27th date, right? Because if you think here that I presented 273 as this symbol and this date that we already had is connected to 273 and this is the center of that. So that's midway, right? Between these two dates. And then 273 dates, days from that date, we come to December 25th, 2021. This would give us this line. Right? So this line, to me, would make sense. And this being the Sunday law, in this, in this line, we say this is the Sunday law because we already said it's the Sunday law. But in this line, it's the Sunday law. But none of these events are any prediction that we have made or not made. Nothing happens on these dates that relate to anything that we would understand about these lines. That is, they're failed predictions. So, so that should help us a little bit in understanding what Abimelech is about, right? This fall of Abimelech. It has to do with this message of these predictions themselves, because that's what I've been struggling with here. So if we say that Abimelech's downfall is more about a specific message, we can see that that definitely would relate to this. Now, it's interesting here, though, I have instead of March 27th, uh, 2021, um, uh, Gregorian, I have March 27th, 2021, Julian. And what else was there about that date? So it, it was, Aaron. Ah, okay, here's the other thing with this date. What's the biblical date for March 27th, 2021? Uh, Gregorian is 1313. And then March 27th, uh, 2021, Julian. Um, there was something else about it. I don't remember. Okay. Anyway, back to this, this chart here. So, so this is about our predictions and their failures. So we can see we have these dates here. So is Abimelech's downfall a downfall of this message that was meant to, to make Abimelech king? That is, because remember the issue that, that people wanted. They wanted a vindication. Right? Is anybody following what what I'm what I'm in, trying to get from this? So who 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 we got as trying to be vindicated? This movement. Oh. This movement believed that it would be vindicated by Nashville being hit by a fireball on July 18. Yeah, that seemed to be the feeling. Right. That all these things were going to happen. These events were going to unfold. 
And so Abimelech is a message that is a message seeking to be king, but it's a bramble, which would describe us. And, and so what I, what I was trying to do before when I looked at this and I saw the implications of these lines, well, I said, well, who is Abimelech? What is Abimelech? And, and to me, it's about, well, this movement has to fall apart. But it, it's, it's a specific message in this movement. And that's the message of time setting. I would I would tend to agree with that theory. Okay. So so in this, so everything that we've said about Abimelech so far is we looked at Abimelech. We said that Abimelech represents a message in this movement, and that it is connected to Parminder's message. But it's it's now in a different form because Parminder did time setting back in 2012, right? Predicted 2014 as the Sunday law. Now, our movement ends up doing time setting, right? Taking what Parminder was doing. And um, and initially, too, we, we accepted his arguments for time setting which I thought were fallacious, right? So the idea that we could use dispensationalism as a way of getting around Ellen White's statements did not sit well with me. Though I understood the implications of it, I think more than most people at the time, just because of my, my upbringing. So I knew what he was saying was, well, we're in a different dispensation and so what she's saying doesn't apply. And, and so I explored that, that idea. I mean, I knew where it, it tended. Um, and if we took that position, like if we took the position that Parminder had, we, we can undo the Bible in the way that we understand it. That is, we would take a metaphorical approach to the scriptures and just say, well, people in the past took the Bible literally, and that was fine for their time, but we're much more enlightened now. And so we can know that, you know, the creation story didn't really happen, but it's a good story, right? You know, it's from God, it's inspired, but it's not factual, right? That's what I grew up with. So I understood the implications of that. And in uh, 2019, in June, when... Uh, Tess was up in Alberta for our camp meeting. Um, I asked her the question regarding, because she was saying there's no Sunday law. And I asked her the question, I said, what do we do about the creation story? The literal, you know, six days of creation. Do we use the dispensational argument and just get rid of that? And she said, well, we're not going to go that, that far. But that was kind of a telling response, because at which point do you stop? Is it just an arbitrary uh, decision on, on, on your part that you're going to decide? Uh, once you start pulling on the thread of the sweater, um, where do you decide that you stop unraveling it? Well, you can see once you start pulling on that thread. What did she say when you asked her that? Well, she just said, we're not going to go that far. Oh, that's all she said? Okay. Yeah, that's what she said. We're not going to go that far. But to me, once you start unraveling the sweater, it all unravels. If anybody's ever seen like a, a sweater that was knitted, not one made in a, a, in a factory. Because once you start unraveling it, it just all unravels, right? Or uh, yeah, it starts to, and the keep it just continues and continues, yes? Yeah, so you can't just arbitra arbitrarily say, well, I'm just going to go this far. <clears throat> because once you've laid that foundation of thought, there's no reason that you, you would stop. So I understood that, 
right? So I understood that back in late June of 2019. But I was still considering it through that whole time, you know, if this was possible, that that this movement had come around to that point, and that did it make sense? And and I can say it doesn't, right? We not only can we not go that far, we can never start down that path, right? You can't you can't just well, say. Well, we are every half. What's that? How's that? The I, well, I'm, I'm just saying that previous to that there, since 2014, Jeff had been saying that we are now in a time which is peculiar. You know, we're not to evangelize. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're in, in a sense, it's maybe, I don't know if we could maybe relate to it to being like another type of dispensation, but maybe like some different so, time, so, some, yeah. some different thing happening. So Parminder used that example as the reason that we could use dispensationalism. Now, I don't, I, I, did, I didn't take that as dispensationalism, and I still don't. It's just that in order to do a work, and because this is something I've believed for a long time, so long before Jeff ever suggested it, um, I believe that our church in their public evangelism was simply making people a uh, twofold child of hell than they themselves are, right? That is, they search sea and land to find one proselyte and make them twofold a child of hell than, than themselves, right? That is, you can't call people out of Babylon if you're in Babylon which doesn't make the church Babylon. The church is in Babylonian captivity. And in order to call people out of Babylon, you need to be going out of Babylon. The church is happy with its Babylonian captivity. So my view is that there need, needs to be a work first, first for the individual, and then for the movement, if the movement is going to at all be effective in um, giving a message to the church. We go first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And, and that's, not that's, not a that's not dispensational argument in the way that Parminder was doing it. Because in his argument, he's saying you can disregard uh, the counsel of the past because, you know, Ellen White, she was... An American Protestant, of course, she thought the Catholic Church was the Antichrist. That's not what Jeff was saying at all with the argument regarding at this time, because of the circumstances and where we are in our lines, we know that we have this internal work to do before we can do this external work. Before we can give the message we have to be ready to give that message. And, and that is just a repeat of lines. Within a line, it, it has a different um, role as you move through a line. So for instance, in Millerite history, after um, April 19th, 1844, were they going to outside of the Adventist movement uh, to find new followers. After 1844? April 19th, 1844. After the first disappointment, they were now in the tarrying time. They weren't evangelizing. Their, their work was internal. They were, they trying, were to, trying to figure it out. Right. They were trying to figure out where did we go wrong, right? Yes. Okay. And, and, and even after October 22nd, too, they now say, well, there's a shut door. Now, we can say in a limited way they were, you know, reaching out to people. 
but not not really there if you look at their camp meetings their camp meetings are all adventist camp meetings they're trying to to sort out why jesus didn't come back in the spring So their, their focus is not evangelism at this point because they don't even know that whether they, they have a message or not to give. So they had just lost everybody almost. Um, and I would say that their attention was focused on, on doing just that, trying to figure out where their mistake was. Right. So, so that tar in that tarrying time, it happens after the arrival of the second angel's message. And this is what I'd like to point out that we're doing the very same thing now. Yes. Yeah, I mean I mean we witness to people around us. And of course that's always going to happen and Jeff never ever said that we shouldn't. Though people interpreted it that way for some reason. Um but he's just saying you know, public evangelism, to go out, have evangelistic meetings, and to keep bringing people into this movement, you know, outside of Adventism. Jeff didn't believe that, that the line showed that that was what we were supposed to be doing. So I wouldn't use it as a dispensational argument. It wasn't, it wasn't our argument that we're in a different dispensationalism and what Ellen White says doesn't apply. He said we're in a different place in the lines, we're repeating Millerite history, and so we need to recognize where we are in the line itself. Because <clears throat> we didn't have a message to give yet. Now, some people believe, you know, that the message that we were supposed to give was the 2520. But the 2520 was more a message um, speaking to to this movement regarding where we were in the lines. And, and to understand the place that the church was at, what, what had happened to the church. So, so it wasn't really a message that we were to give to Adventists, as far as I'm concerned. And and I still don't think we have the message that we are to give. I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah, not completely. We have some some ideas. Um, so Abimelech's downfall is a false methodology. But it's not just a false methodology because it is connected to time. But for the wrong reason. Because the way that I look at these lines, everything that has been shown us, we've never been able to predict an event. We can measure the time and we can look back and see um, how these dates witness to God's leading. And now we have this date way in the future, you know, April 5th, 2030, and we have to know how to relate to that. But here in this line, once we get to December 25th, 2021, our line is over. Abimelech has fallen. That structure that we had, it, it's in the past. And we can't look at any of these dates and say, you know, these dates are... Um, you know, we were right about what was going to happen on any of these dates. And so when we get to December 25th, 2021, we have now moved into another line. And, and, and we've already gone through this in Judges, right? So we know that, and, and maybe before I, I go here, just to go back again to what I mean, so when we look at ju the judge's line here, right? Jotham is this, um, this message here, right? And we also have to look at Tola and Jair 
and see how this fits in because this is the July 18, 2020 waymark. Now, we know that Jotham then brings us all the way to here, right? Or at least the Bimelech does. It brings us up to the midnight cry. And we can see that with Samuel Snow's letters. Even though the letters occur between these waymarks, Samuel Snow still has a part to play on the formalization and the empowerment of the second angel's message. It's just not a part of his letters. <clears throat> so as we, we look at Jotham, he is this um, this message testifying to the truthfulness of this line, to what this line is about. So let's take a look at, at uh, again, Tola and JR, or J, J -er, however you say that. <clears throat> so it says, after Abimelech there rose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, the man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir in Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel 20 and three years and died and was buried in Shamir. And after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judged Israel 22 years. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities, which are called Havoth, Havoth Jair, unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. So remember, we looked at this, the 23 and the 22. The 23 represents the 25 or the 2300 days, right? The 22 represents a symbol of restoration. Together they are 45. And then with Jair, he has these 30 sons, the 30 ascolds, and the 30 cities. And the 30, 30, 30, how did we understand the 30, 30, 30? It's a symbol of? Anybody remember? Nobody remembers what the 30, 30, 30 was about? Okay, so it was 25252.5. And how did we get that? So we just simply divided it by 12. And why did we do that? So why did we divide it by 12? Jacob's 12 sons. Okay. So um, that would be one reason to divide it by 12. So we, we just have this symbol that we have. Now we used it also in the story of Samson, right? So that same symbol is going to show up again. So we have this number of the covenant. Now, so if we look at these lines of the judges and we, we see this, um, um, just trying to find this here somewhere. So go back here. So remember, a covenant is a prophetic mirror, a waymark, right? It's the center waymark of a prophetic mirror. That's, that's where the cross is. And so if we have 
uh, July 18, 2020, as Tola and Jair. That's the second angel arriving, and it's the center, symbolically, of these seven way marks. And so the number of the covenant, the symbol of the covenant, is the number 12 because of the 12 sons, but also the, the 12 disciples and the other 12s that we have. So, <clears throat> so we can see that Tola and Jair here in this center. Now, we know we're going to also have it with Samson, the 30, 30, 30, when the third angel arrives. And the 2522.5, which is what you get, symbolizes that the division of our line, the 252 days to July 18, 2020, and the 525 days to December 25th, 2021, right, that we would have in our line. Okay. <clears throat> so Tola and Jair don't give us a lot of information. That is, to put them on a reform line, we aren't given tons of events. So how would we put them on a reform line? If we're going to draw a reform line of Tola and Jair. What would we do? So when would we start Tola and Jair? Because we, we're zooming in July 18, 2020. Yep. Somebody well, said, I'm thinking the, was it the uh, 22 years first followed by 23 years? The other way, 23 followed by 22. Okay. So it seems like a mirror to me of the 220 followed by the 2300 days. Okay, so right. 677. Okay, so this, this is an important point that you're bringing up here. Um, so what, what you're arguing is that we have, with the 2300 and the 2520, there's 222, or 220 years that are the difference from the beginning because they both end on the same date, right? And so the 2300 days represents, or the 23 represents the 2300 days, the 23 years, and the 22 represents the 220. So together, they're the 2520. Right? Yeah. Okay. And, and that, now you said that brings us back to 677. Yes. Okay. And and that's the captivity of Manasseh. And and then we have this 30, 30, 30. So we got the 23, the 22, the 30, 30, 30. And we can understand that the 30, 30, 30 represents to that line of the seven, seven, seven days. And it, it can show July 18th as the way mark because... 252 from November 9th to July 18th and 525 from July 18th to December 25th, 2021. And so that would put Mark July 18th as Tola and Jir. It's the double way mark, right? So it's the second angel's message. And we had um, 
the meanings of the names. Uh, so Pua, which means splendid. Um, Tola means a worm. And then Jair, um, that's going to be um, he enlightens. And uh, we have, he's a Gileadite. So we know that Gilead is that rocky region that's um, on the east side of the Jordan and a little bit to the north. Um, and then we have the symbol of Islam, the ass cults. But we also have these 30 sons and the 30 cities, which is, of course, that the cities are the hamlets of Jair. <clears throat> Okay, and then he's buried in Kamen, which is means raised. Um, has to do with, uh, it means to rise in various applications, literally, figuratively, intensively, and causatively. Uh, means abide, accomplish, be dearer, confirm, continue, decree, be dim, endure, um, Lots of different ways in which it's applied. Rise up against, uh, to establish strength and succeed, be strong. Um, <clears throat> make sure, right? So we got lots of different ways in which we could um, look at where he was buried. Now, we also have Judges 10. The 10 1 relates to uh, the first day of the 10th month, but it can also refer to the 10th day of the first month. Right, so it can relate to when they cross the Jordan, and it can also relate to when the divorce begins. And the crossing of the Jordan represents baptism, so that can relate to 9-11 or to 11-9. So we don't have a lot of events here, but we have symbols that we could attach these to um, a line. Anything else that we're forgetting? No other thoughts on any symbols here that we're missing? Symbolically, how do we apply Judges 10.6? Well, that's going to be relating to Jephthah, but um, so why do you bring up 10.6? Okay. I was looking at it as the next progression. Okay, yeah, because you're going to have all of the apostasy that happens prior to Jephthah arriving, right? Correct. So so that's going to be the period of darkness. So, so you're saying that here we have Tola and Jair, and then we have uh, further disobedience and oppression after July 18th. Correct. Okay. Well, there's no doubt that that's, that's going to follow. 
So the question that, though is how do we take Tola and Gier and put it on a line? We know it's July 18, 2020, because we could see that in the symbols here. And, and it relates to the 2520 and the 2300 days. So time prophecy. And so these messages, there's two messages here. One is the 2300 days, and the other is the 220 years. Now, the 220 years relates to the four to seven times as applied to literal Israel. Right? That's, you know, starts with Manasseh's captivity and ends with uh, the first decree of Artaxerxes and as we're leaving Babylon and going to Jerusalem. So how do we get this all connected to July 18th? Would we connect it with July 18th from a from a clearer understanding of the 2300 day prophecy? Okay. So so we know that July 18th is the disappointment. Right. right. So we can relate that to the end of the 2300 days. So I think that's a good point. But then we have also this period of restoration. The symbol of 22 represents restoration. We know the 22, if we think about its primary um, applications, initially there's 22 generations to Jacob entering Egypt, right? There is um, 22 years from Joseph's dream until he's united with his brothers. And those are two periods of 11 years. And just like there's 11 generations to the flood and 11 generations to Egypt. We also have the, uh, the 22 way marks from creation to the flood. Okay. Um, how do you define the 22 way marks from creation to the, uh, um, what do you mean? The in Stephen's presentation, um, in from the flood to, uh, I'm sorry, from creation to the flood, because we have eleven generations. Yes, There's but 20. we had twenty-two waymarks on that on that chart that hey, we Stephen? were looking at. Okay, Stephen, can you explain what he's talking about? Since you're the one who did it. Yes. Okay, so you have the creation. Uh, year and then uh, so you have the birth of Seth then after that yeah and then so you have the, the birth of the people then marked and then you have a lot of the deaths marked you know obviously Noah's not death doesn't occur before that time it's j oh. and Shem um, okay. so and the you way have the way the mark of you know you know okay you have the way mark of the building of the ark. So if you just add up all the, the way marks of the death, the verse of the ark as well, of you not being taken, you have a total, the, the, the 22 way marks will take you to the flood. Okay, okay. So I don't, I didn't remember that, but. Um, so and just, I only got yeah. it because I was doing, um, trying to compile all this information. Actually, Stephen was the one that motivated me to do that. Okay. Uh, he had he had said something about the twenty two way marks, and I'm starting to writing it down. And then I I noticed again, yeah, that's twenty two way marks. That's that's restoration. Okay. Okay. So so we got the twenty two there. Um, so it's just not taking like the story of Adam and Eve's fall and marking that as a way mark or anything. It's just. No, it was started with the births. 
and Jeff, then the I'm sorry, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, it's I, just contrived from the numbers that were given. Oh, you know, okay. So obviously, the there's Cain and Abel are born some. But, but okay. we, we don't we don't have any numbers there involved with Cain, Cain and Abel. So Seth, Seth would be the next way, Mark. From creation. So that's the first time we're given a number. Yes. I guess technically you have the seven days of creation, and so that's where you're starting. And then you so the first way mark is creation or the first way yes, mark? That, Adam's creation. Yeah, the first way mark is creation. No, obviously then them seven years happen within that same year. So I'm just counting way marks in the in, as in years that were given. You know, okay. so I know there's there's more way marks. We, we can maybe, you can maybe say 23 if you want to maybe add in the, when the, the Noah gets off the ark. So there's maybe that year, I didn't maybe include that way. So you have 22 or 23 then. Okay. If you, if you want to have them at the, the ark. Uh, the, well, maybe that would be after the flood. You know, so that, so maybe, uh, so maybe, okay. maybe, yeah, up until to the flood itself is 22. Okay, thanks. So that, that's helpful as well. So if we look at Tola and J here, so we're saying that this is July 18th. But we see these other symbols attached to it. So these symbols are... Um, they tie us to these other lines. Right, so that we could we can take these lines, and and address what this twenty two is about. So we have the twenty three, so that's the twenty three hundred days. That's going to end, you know, October twenty two, eighteen forty four, the great disappointment. We're taking July eighteenth as a parallel to that, and then we have the twenty two, which is a symbol of restoration, and we have all of these examples of the two twenty, the twenty twos. So, and, and they're usually 11 and 11, but not always, right? So obviously the 220 years, I've never divided it into 110 and 110. Now we also have that with 9-11 as well because of the, the Twin Towers, right? Because they're, what's, what's it about the height of the Twin Towers? It's this number of stories. Are they 110 stories each? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where, you know, so there you have an 11 times two or, you know, 110 times two to get the T20. So, so this symbol shows up again and again. And, you know, if I was going to, to take this line of Tola and Jair, what we have to recognize is, is what is the period of darkness and, and what that means. So it doesn't tell us about any oppressor. Atola and Jair are judges, and they're judging after Abimelech has died. Right? Tola does that for 20, 23 years, and then Jair for 22. Also, Joseph lived 110 years, we know. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> So these, these are messages that we can just say are judges. So they're judging this movement. And they're, they're providing these symbols. And, and what's judging this movement are, is a message regarding the 2300 days and the 2520. And also the understanding of these lines. Right. So we have, you know, can we put them on a line? Can we say they start at a certain point and that we have way marks that we can mark out with what's been given here? That That's the question. You know, do we start them at 11.9? Do we start them somewhere else? Do we not draw them as a line at all?
Well, I kind of remember how you came up with certain dates. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, uh, your your uh, understanding of um, the chronology was done by testing over and over again. You'd put stuff on paper and it didn't look right. You can't do that. We try this. We can't do that. We tried that. We can't do that. And then mm-hmm. as, as you progressed, you came up with, a, uh, with an understanding uh, only because you tried and erred, tried and erred, tried and erred. So I look at this at the same way. Okay. Um, well, let's take a look here at a chart. So uh, just creating this new chart and just get rid of all of this. So if we're going to have Tola and Jay here, um, what we have to do is we have to put 23 and 22 in here. So we say that Jay, Tola is, am I spelling that right? Of course, we're not going to have it being seven years. Um, This ends up being 45 years, whatever that means. So you have these 45 years, you have 23 years and 22 years. I don't know why I put it. Right? And this is like... um, uh, the 2520, but a mirror of it. So instead of 2300 years and 220, we got 23 and 22. Of course, you know, 2300 has two zeros and 220 has one zero, but. Now, as far as the span of time of 22 years, Yeah, so the 45 gives us to the 1335, Daniel 12, 12. So how do we relate these these periods of time? So we're saying, you know, Tola could be the first angel's message, J.E. or the second. Is that what we're going to say? And then when did, when did the second angel arrive? You know, we just got a few minutes. You know, we're thinking about this. Got a little bit of dead air, though. Okay, so let's try to think this through. Tola J. Ear are July 18, 2020. They have these two different periods of time, 23 and 22, which add up to 45. But we're not saying that there's actually 45 years.
as I'm thinking through your question, I'm also having to consider if this is not another type of a chiastic representation because when we get to 677 and then 457 we have the 22 or 220 followed then by the 2300 here yeah. we have the 23 followed by the 22 yeah, and that's what Stephen pointed out so the 2300 and the 220 making the 2520. Now, when, when we have the 30, 30, 30, and we divide it by 12, we get this um, number, which is, uh, I'll just do it this way. Because we use this in the story of Samson as well. So, right so we get this this number and this gives us then um this this 23 is also 252 and this 22 is 525 if that makes sense so so we could just take this and have this tola and j year represent messages that occur in our 777 days So, uh, you know, these are just things we're throwing around here. We're going to have to look at this tomorrow. Right. But um, there might be something mathematical that we find out about these spans of time. Now, but the main thing that we want to try to consider is what is the darkness that Tola and Jair are addressing? Because that's how we would understand this line. Now, in the story... It occurs after, you know, Abimelech's dead, right? But we know that we're not following these chronologically. There was not, we're not saying that Tola and Jair, you know, then start, you know, when um, Abimelech ends, because they're illustrating the same history. But we can use what it means when Abimelech is dead. Uh, we could use that for the darkness, what this darkness is, or we could just ignore that and just say that this darkness is something that exists that these symbols tell us about. And so we would have a darkness, and if we're going to put a date there, then there would have to be a message that begins at that date that Tola and Jair are addressing in their symbols. Now, the fact that they're just judges, that they're not, they're not dealing with any particular enemy, a judge is a civil judge. They deal with disputes. And, and so they may represent something having to do with, with what's in our history. Anyway, we're going to end there. So it's a lot of things to think about as usual. But we are making progress in understanding these lines. Okay, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We ask for your care and protection. Help us to think about these things. We pray for those watching the videos and those that have participated. <clears throat> we ask that um, 
you can work in their lives and lead them into all truth. Help us to understand the message for this time that we can be truly converted and bring us together again according to thy will, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.